We will go through um, exercises on discrete random variables um, and I will try to give you small hints, so that you can work them out yourself. Uh, now, the question 1 says that each voter is for proposition um, that petrol price should be slashed by rupees 5. Okay. So, this is the and so people are supposed to vote for this with probability 0 0.9. So, uh, probability that a person will vote for this uh, uh, that the prices should be slashed by rupees 5 is 0 0.9. What is the probability that exactly 7 of 10 voters are for this proposition? So, you should be able to guess what distribution you have to use here at least one half of an airplane's engines are required to function in order airplanes. Okay. There is an apostrophe there. So, um, at least one half of an airplane's engines are required to function in order for it to operate. So, if there are obviously, we are assuming that um, uh, even number of engines are there and um, so half of them have to function in order for the plane to be able to fly. So, if each engine independently functions with probability p for what values of p is a four engine plane more likely to operate than a two engine plane. So, please first write down the probability of uh, two or more uh, engines working uh, for a four engine plane and uh, two uh, for, for a uh, two engine plane it will be one or two engines working for a two engine plane in terms of p and then uh, write down the inequality that you want the uh, probability for the four engine plane to be higher and so what would be the uh, what, what what would be the values of p for which uh, this inequality would be satisfied uh, question 3 a news boy purchases papers at rupees 2.50 and sells them at rupees 3 However, he is not allowed to return unsold papers. If his daily demand is a binomial random variable with n equal to 25 and p equal to 1 by 3, approximately how many papers should he purchase so as to maximize his expected profit? So, now see you, you start with you do not know exactly how many uh, newspapers he buys. So, let us say the number is r that means, r successes binomial random variable. So, you know the probability, uh, what is the probability when he has, um, uh, we have, when he uh, this is daily demand is a binomial random variable with this right. How many uh, papers should he purchase right. So, essentially what you have to show here is that the expected value would be a function of r the number of newspapers he buys right and that you have to then maximize with respect to r. So, that will tell you uh, what the optimum value of r will be because here see when you take the expected value uh, depending on the demand it will tell you that um, see uh, when he is able to sell a newspaper he earns 50 paisa if he is not able to sell a paper then he loses 3 rupees. So, accordingly you have to write down the expected uh, profit uh, for this news boy and then uh, maximize it uh, and find out the optimum value of uh, the number of papers he must order. Okay. If x has a distribution function f, what is the distribution function of e raise to x? So, you have to find that out again apply the definition. What is the distribution function of alpha x plus beta, where alpha and beta are constants alpha not equal to beta. Then uh, question 5, let n be a positive integer valued uh, random variable show that expected value of n. So, n takes positive integer values. So, then expected n is sigma i varying from 1 to infinity probability n greater than or equal to i. So, it is a matter of you know writing out the expression for E n and then rearranging the term, so that you can uh, get at this answer. Six problem if x is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda show that e raise to x n is lambda e raise to x plus 1 raise to n plus 1. Now, use this result to compute e uh, expected value of x raise to 4. Okay, this is straightforward from a set of n randomly chosen people this problem I have already discussed with you in one of the lectures. I explained uh, the notation E i j right that a person i and j have the same birthday. Assume that each person is equally likely to have any of the 365 days of the year as his or her birthday. So, then you have to find these conditional probabilities uh, that I have written down here and then I am asking the question are E 3 4 and E 1 2 independent. 
Okay. Then what can you say about the independence of the events E 1 3 and E 1 2? Now, you can almost guess what the answers would be, but anyway you have to work it work out and show that they are. That means, you have to show that the probability of E 3 4 intersection E 1 2, that means all these 4 people uh, having their uh, same birthday will be product of the probabilities of E 3 4 into E 1 2 and so on. Right. Uh, question 8, prove the recursion formula for x Poisson, which is probability x equal to i plus 1 is lambda upon i plus 1 uh, into probability x equal to i with lambda as its uh, parameters. So, Poisson random variable with lambda as the parameter, then you have to show this and you if you start with probability x equal to 0 equal to e raise to minus lambda, then you can compute probability x equal to 1 so on from this recursion formula. Then you also I want you to compute probability x less than or equal to 100 when the uh, mean of the Poisson distribution is uh, 100. Okay, and you can compare uh, compare your results because Poisson tables are not easily available. So in the, the website you can go and look at the tables. For a hypergeometric random variable, determine uh, probability x equal to k plus 1 upon probability x equal to k. So here also I am asking you to uh, find out the recursion formula. Question 10, the number of eggs laid on a tree leaf by an insect of a certain type is a Poisson random variable with parameter lambda. However, such a random variable can only be observed if it is positive, since if it is 0 then we cannot know that such an insect was on the leaf, because there will be no eggs present on that leaf. If we let y denote the observed number of eggs, then probability y equal to i is equal to probability x equal to i given that x is greater than 0, where x is Poisson with parameter lambda. So, find E y. So, I am asking you to find uh, the uh, conditional expectation of x. Question 11, each game you play is a win with probability p. You plan to play uh, 5 games, but if you win the fifth game, then you will keep on playing until you lose. So, uh, here negative binomial would be used. Find the expected number of games that you play, find the expected number of games that you lose. Okay, so, I hope you enjoy doing this exercise. I will continue with the, uh, the you know, um, examples and some more results about the um, cumulative distribution function, because it is a very important concept and uh, also as we go along with uh, special distributions and so on, we will uh, be able to get more familiar with the whole idea. So, uh, let us consider the function g x, which is uh, defined here for x less than 0 by this and for x non negative by this. Then uh, we want to show that limit of g x as x goes to minus infinity must tend to 0, which it does because e raise to x goes to 0 as x goes to minus infinity. Similarly, limit of g x as x goes to uh, plus infinity should go to 1 and that also you can see because this is e raise to minus x. So, as x goes to infinity, this portion goes to 0, you are left with 1. So, that is fine. Then you want to show that um, g x is monotone and g, you know, g x is monotonically increasing. So, we take the derivative here because g is a continuous function differentiable also. So, I can take the derivative and if the first derivative is non negative which it is right uh, e raise to x half e, this is non negative for all x therefore, g x is monotonically increasing. So, uh, g prime x will be half e raise to x for x less than 0 and for um, and it will be see there is a minus sign and so there is a minus 1 will come from here. So, it will become plus. So, that will be half e raise to minus x for x greater than or equal to 0. So, we see that g prime x is non negative for all x. This is a non negative function, this is a non negative function. So, therefore, g prime x is non negative for all x which implies that g x is monotonically increasing uh, which is again a property of g that for a, of, a, of a cumulative distribution function. So, we just verifying that this qualifies to be a, a cumulative distribution function and then other properties we will check. G satisfies all the uh, conditions for uh, being a CDF. right? Now, uh, we also have this result that if f is continuous in an interval, then f the uh, integral of f from minus infinity to x, this is differentiable on the int on that interval. So, wherever in, in whichever region f is continuous, uh, capital F the cumulative density function would be differentiable. And so, uh, then therefore, that means, if you if you are given the C d f and then uh, it is differentiable, then you can 
differentiate it and say that it will be equal to the p d f wherever the function is differentiable right. And also we have seen it already that um, uh, since this is equal to probability x less than or equal to x then um, and this is um, integral minus infinity to x of f y d y then this defines again the area under the curve from minus infinity to x. So, wherever the mass is okay. and so um, now uh, given this since we have uh, verified that this is a valid c d f let us now find out the uh, probability density function and which we said that uh, we get by differentiating the um, c d f. So, here you see g prime x is half e raise to x if x is less than 0 and uh, when you differentiate this part the minus sign minus sign becomes plus. So, this is half e raise to minus x which is um, for x non negative. So, actually this is very important that when you define the p d f you have to specify where it is defined because that means, uh, where it is non 0 and where it is 0 because uh, you have to say uh, where the mass is of the uh, random variable. So, it is very important sometimes people just forget this and you write this only which is not correct because you must specify the region in which it is defined that means, where the mass exists. Okay. Now, uh, so therefore, uh, this and this is a non negative function you see that right and now you can verify that this is uh, a, a valid p d f by integrating it from minus infinity to infinity. So, that will be <coughs> minus infinity to 0 e raise to x right and then plus half 0 to infinity e raise to minus x d x and you can see that the integral uh, would be half e raise to x minus infinity to 0 that will give you. So, at 0 it will be 1 right. Uh, so, that is half and um, minus half. So, when you integrate this it will minus sign half e raise to minus x 0 to infinity this again gives you half. So, half plus half is 1. So, therefore, we have uh, verified that your uh, small f x is a p d f and also that this is a c d f. Okay. Uh, let us take another example of a this uh, C D F now here an electronic component functioning time an electronic components components functioning time uh, before it fails can be considered a continuous random variable x and suppose its P D F is given by this. So, therefore, uh, you want uh, the first question is for what value of lambda is f x a P D F and obviously, we apply the condition because it is a non negative function. So, the second condition is that from 0 to infinity since here again you see uh, the mass is for x non negative for x less than 0 it is 0 right. So, I will integrate the function from 0 to infinity and e raise to minus x by 50. So, this becomes uh, minus 1 by 50 comes to the uh, top to the numerator of minus 50 lambda e raise to minus x by 50 from 0 to infinity. So, at infinity this is 0 and at 0 it will be 1. So, 50 lambda is equal to 1. This is the condition we need. Uh, so, that uh, this is a valid p d f and therefore, we get that lambda is 1 by 50. Okay. So, the first question has been answered. Now, I uh, want you to compute probability x less than or equal to 150. So, you compute 0 to 150 1 upon 50 e raise to minus x upon 50 d x which uh, comes out to be this and then at 150. So, at 0 it is 1 and then this is minus e raise to minus 150 by 50 minus 3. So, look up the uh, value for this or ca from your calculator or what and you get the answer. Okay. Now, as I said that um, there are um, discrete random variables, continuous random variables and mixed kind of random variables. So, I will take up this example for a mixed random variable. Suppose, you are given this function capital F x right. So, I plot it for x less than 0 it is 0. So, this is a portion then you see for and see note that here it this this is x less than 0 for x equal to 0 and greater than 0 then this part operates right and therefore, the value jumps to 1 by 3. Okay. So, uh, and then it continues to be 1 by 3 till x reaches 1, but it is not equal to 1. So, therefore, at this point it is 1 by 3 and then it is like this and here 
at 1 here. So, you see the right continuity part is satisfied, there is a jump here again at x equal to 1, because at x less than or equal to 1, uh, less than 1 it is 1 by 3. The moment you attain the value uh, x equal to 1, it jumps to 2 by 3. So, here again the jump is of 1 by 3. Okay. And then after that, see what happens, this is x upon 3. So, as x varies from 2 to 3 at 2, see this is 2 by 3 and this is also 2 by 3, x equal to 2, right. Two. So, therefore, and then it continues like this, the slope is of this line is 1 by 3 and then of course, at 3, um, as long as say, this is the line and then at 3, it becomes 1. So, you see here, uh, you have both kinds that the function uh, take has jumps. So, it is a step function for some values and then after that, it is a continuous function. Okay. So, therefore, that is what I have said that here um, uh, and we have already seen that you know uh, how we compute this difference, but I am saying that probability x equal to 0, uh, this will be f 0 minus f 0 minus. So, f 0 minus is 0, f 0 is 1 by 3 and therefore, the value is 1 by 3, probability x equal to 0 and probability x equal to 1 will be f 1 minus f, mi f 1 minus and so, uh, that will be f 1, f 1 will be 2 by 3 and f 1 minus is 1 by 3. So, again the difference is 1 by 3. So, the two jumps are of 1 by 3. So, this is what will happen and here again I want to point out see we the, the result that we have shown that um, uh, probability x less than or equal to x or of course, even for an interval same thing will hold I had shown you last time that uh, 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 the area under that strip would be the probability when x lies in an interval. So, here this thing is valid only when f is uh, you know uh, f is continuous and then so this is a x is a continuous random variable. Now, so therefore, for discrete and mixed kind we will not apply this result. So, uh, only when uh, uh, the random variable is completely continuous you can apply that result. So, here this is uh, this result. So, I mean one has to be careful and say keep the, this in mind that you cannot compute this by area under the curve, because the p see the p d f uh, would not be uh, this is your cumulative density function. right? So, p d f would be for these two values will be a bar chart and then it will be uh, this thing. Uh, so, therefore, uh, the concept of area under the curve does not apply for mixed random variable or for discrete random variable, it only applies to continuous random variable. Okay you know computation of CDF is very important, you should uh, get the idea very clear in your mind uh, how you can go about doing it and um, the validity uh, you must make sure that uh, when you consider a function to be a CDF, it must satisfy the it must have all the properties that we have uh, you know said that a CDF must have and so on. So, um, I mean uh, you know even this is not enough you should work out many more problems to get familiar with this concept. We will talk about uh, a uniform random variable now, one of the simplest and uh, very widely used uh, continuous random variable and try to get the uh, uh, get a feeling about uh, this particular uh, uh, distribution. So, now see suppose we pick a number at random between 0 and 1. So, this is important, we pick a number at random, which means that any number is equally likely and I have been using this term very often uh, describing events and so on. So, um, we pick a number at random between 0 and 1, the probability that it lies in the interval 0 x should be proportionate to the, uh, the proportion that the length of the interval 0 x is of the length of the whole interval 0 1. This is what we mean by uh, picking a number at random. I okay. will repeat that if we are saying that I pick a number here and I say that it is lying in this interval 0 comma x, x is of course, a number which is less than 1, then um, the probability that the number lies in this interval should be the proportion that the length of this interval is of the length of the interval 0 comma 1. And if you can um, recall that in the discrete case, I had told you number of favorable cases divided by the total number of cases it is sort of an extension of the same concept that if I am saying that 
uh, the probability that the number I pick up lies in this, then the length of this interval divided by the length of the total interval should be the probability that the number that I have picked lies in this interval. And this in a sense captures the concept of a uniform random variable or what we keep saying uh, uh, a number is equally likely in this interval and so on. right? So, this will be uh, when we are saying that probability that the number lies here, that means uh, this actually describes that probability, right? Because we are saying that the number that I pick between 0 and 1 lies in the interval 0 x, that means the number is smaller than or equal to x, and so it is between 0 and small x. So, therefore, this is f x and what I am saying is that the cumulative density function is x upon 1, which is equal to x if x is between small x is between 0 and 1. So, this uh, I immediately get the uh, cumulative density function of this random variable and if you draw the picture, you see it is like this, because as x goes from 0 to 1 and then it stays at 1. So, you see this is uh, there is no discontinuity here, no jumps here, therefore, this represents a uh, continuous, um, uh, this is the uh, graph of a cumulative uh, distribution function for a continuous random variable. Okay. Uh, the p d f of course, as I, we have now can use this fact that uh, this is differentiable from 0 to 1 and so, um, uh, the derivative of this function will give you the p d f f x equal to 1 in the interval 0 1 and 0 otherwise. Okay. So, simple right. So, this is one uh, special case when I said that the uh, random variable uh, is defined on the interval 0 1 uh, and so it is uniformly distributed in that interval. In general, in general we say that x is uniform random variable on the interval alpha comma beta if its probability density function is given by 1 upon beta minus alpha x lying between alpha and beta and 0 otherwise. So, you see I will again repeat that whenever I am defining a PDF or a uh, cumulative density function, I have to define the region on which it is specified. Okay. So, of course, for the CDF it goes up to infinity, because after whatever the values are over, then it uh, uh, stays at 1. Okay. Uh, so, for um, and therefore, see here again this is proportionate to the length of the. So, the length of the interval is beta minus alpha. So, 1 upon beta. So, any. Um, the, uh, so, here for example, if you draw the graph of uh, this uh, p d f of a ran uniform random variable, this will be alpha and let us say this is beta, then this is the length. So, this this height is 1 upon beta minus alpha, right, which is greater than 0. And you see, if you uh, look at the area under this curve, this is a rectangle, height is, um, so the area is 1 upon beta minus alpha into the length, length is also beta minus alpha. So, this is equal to 1. So, this is a valid p d f okay. and the area under the graph uh, you know that concept. So, now if you are for example, if you if you are wanting the probability that x is less than or equal to some gamma, where gamma is some number here, right, then it will be this area under the curve. So, this is how you can uh, very simple to picturize and you can not go wrong with it, but just make sure that you um, write the probability correctly and always always validate, always make sure that you have the right numbers. Okay. Then you want to compute the um, expected value of a uh, general uh, uniform random variable, this will be 1 upon beta minus alpha integral alpha to beta x d x which comes out to be x square by 2 alpha to beta. So, 1 upon beta minus alpha into uh, beta square minus alpha square by 2 that uh, leaves alpha plus beta by 2. So, very simple way to remember whatever the interval for the uniform you just add the two end points divide by 2 that gives you the expectation. So, it is a middle point. Uh, the expectation yeah. So, what will it be? 
yes just see here uh, this is alpha and so alpha plus beta minus alpha by 2 right because the length of the interval the midpoint of this interval is beta minus alpha by 2 which you add to alpha to get to this point right the length here is beta minus alpha so half of the length this length is beta minus alpha by 2 add it to alpha that gives you alpha plus beta by 2 right so that's the midpoint the expectation and expectation x square will simply this make it beta cube uh, so x cube by 3 and from alpha to beta this will be beta cube minus alpha cube by 3 and uh, uh, you know uh, uh, expand this multiply divide by beta minus alpha you get this and then for the variance it will be expectation x x square minus expectation x whole square which when you simplify comes out to be 1 by 12 beta minus alpha whole square so again here it is easy to remember uh, the formula for the variance uh, length of the interval square divided by 12. So, the length of the interval is beta minus alpha square it up divide by 12 that gives you the variance of the uniform random variable. Okay. Uh, let us look at this example. Buses arrive at a specified stop at 15 minute interval starting at 7 am. So, that is uh, the first bus arrives at 7 then the next bus will arrive at 7 15 then 7 30, 7 or 45 and so on. So, at interval of 15 minutes the buses keep arriving. If a passenger arrives at this stop at a time that is uniformly distributed between 7 and 7 30 am. So, this is again an example because you cannot uh, the time of the arrival of a passenger can be sort of treated as a continuous random variable. Um, you might say that know your clock gives you uh, discrete time, but essentially uh, the concept is that you will treat this as a continuous random variable. So, uh, here the, the, the uh, distribution of his arrival time is a uniform random variable between 7 and 7 30 a m. So, it is equally likely what time he arrives from 7 to 7 30 a m. Okay. So, then you have to find the probability that he waits less than 5 minutes for a bus. So, he waits for uh, less than 5 minutes for a bus. See, since the person should have to wait less than 5 minutes, therefore, uh, the event that we have to, um, the, the probability of the event that we are asking for is uh, 10 less than x and less than or equal to 15 it should be not less than or equal to because we want the time waiting time to be less than 5 minutes. So, the equality would have been valid if we had said that uh, the time can be waiting time is 5 or less, but here we are saying the time is waiting time is less than 5 minutes. So, therefore, it should be 10 less than x. So, make the correction because while computing the probability I think I have said 10 less than or equal to x. Similarly, here it will be 25. Uh, less than x. So, uh, see here he would if he if he has to wait less than uh, 5 minutes then it should he should be arriving. So, his arrival time should be greater than 25 and less than or equal to 30. So, please make that correction in the computation, but as I said uh, the probability part it does not make a difference, but here it will uh, the event has to be described correctly. Then you see um, he should arrive between 10 and 15 see his time is between 7 and 7 30 right. So, uh, the, one, the first bus arrived at 7, the next is going to arrive at 7 15. So, if he has to wait for uh, five, less than 5 minutes, then he should arrive after 10 right and then uh, it should be bit less than 15 because he has to get the bus. So, uh, this 5 minute interval if he arrives in this interval, then he will have to wait. Uh, or less than 5 minutes. right? Similarly, if he arrives in this time interval 25 and 30, so this is in minutes, then, then again he will have to wait for uh, at most 5 minutes. Is that okay? So, the event that he has to less wait less than 5 minutes for a bus. So, these, these two events capture the uh, this uh, event and uh, since they are disjoint, I can add up the probabilities. right? this and these are disjoint because a person cannot arrive at both the times, uh, both time intervals either he arrives here or he here. So, therefore, uh, these are the two events and so the probabilities add up and here the probability as I told you, this is simply when you divide 
I was drawing the figure for you somewhere. Yeah, here. Huh? So, it is the length of the interval divided by the interval in which your uh, variable lies, just the what example we looked at, right. And so, uh, this length interval is 5 and 1 by 30, because his distribution is uniform distribution and the length of the interval is th uh, 30. So, 1 by 30 is the probability of being, uh, I mean, uh, the p d f is 1 by 30. Uh, so, therefore, this is 5 by 30 plus 5 by 30, which is 1 by 3, right. Now, the second part is he has to wait more than 10 minutes. So, if he has to wait for more than 10 minutes, then he should either arrive in this interval, because if he arrives any t any time between 0 and 5 minutes, I mean see x. So, that is what important I should have specified. x is the minutes, minutes past 7 a m when the passenger arrives at the st stop. So, x is the random variable because his arrival itself is a random uh, variable. So, therefore, uh, random phenomena. So, uh, x the number the, the, the number of minutes which are past 7 a m when the passenger arrives at the stop. So, therefore, uh, uh, if you want to describe this event that uh, he is um, uh, he will have to wait for the bus for more than 10 minutes, then he should either arrive that means, his x should lie between 0 and 5 or between 15 and 20 because if he arrives at um, 15 minutes, the bus has just left and so he will have to wait for the uh, next bus, which will come at uh, uh, this thing 7. If he comes at 7 15, then the other one will come 30. So, he will have to wait for more than 10 minutes right? and up to 20, because uh, if um, like he arrives at 7 20, then he will have to wait for 10 minutes, because the next arrival would be at uh, 7 30. Right? Okay, I hope that this event descri is described by these two. Again, these two are disjoint. So, therefore, they add up to, uh, we can add up the probabilities and this will be 5 by 30 plus 5 by 30, which is 1 by 3 again. Okay. Now, an important um, uh, 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 usefulness of uh, random variables, of course, there will be many occasions when we will uh, see how uh, uniform distribution is used. Uh, for example, um, in simulation you need to generate random numbers from a particular PDF and uh, simulation is the order of the day. You uh, sometimes, if you cannot get physical data, you try to uh, generate it and. Uh. So, here what we will do is, um, you want to generate random numbers and we can use this concept of um, CDF very nicely here. So, take x to be a random variable and capital F is the corresponding cumulative distribution function and now define the random variable y which is f x, because now uh, whatever the function f I just place uh, a capital X there. So, this becomes a random variable again and this is uniform 0 1. So, this is the way where we will use the property of the uh, cumulative distribution function. Now, we can show this immediately this property that because if, if you consider the probability of y less than or equal to small y, then this is the probability of f x less than or equal to y, right, which uh, you know will be 0 if y is less than 0, right and uh, will be f x inverse y, if y is between 0 and 1 and this will be 1, when y is greater than or equal to 1. Now, I have used the concept of f inverse here, which I did not mention earlier. Now, the uh, whole idea is that is here, okay, let us take x to be a continuous random variable. In that case, your f x is monotonically increasing, okay, which we have seen uh, so, uh, in so through so many examples also that f x and we proved it also as one of the properties that f x is an increasing function and therefore, x in uh, the f x inverse will exist. So, there is no problem. In case x, so I am now uh, doing the giving the you this. Uh, uh, property of generating of random numbers for a continuous random variable, but there are certainly even even when x is a discrete random variable, uh, this may not be unique, but you can very easily uh, you know the ways of determining uh, a unique value for the f x inverse, which is possible. So we see whenever x is not uh, a continuous random variable and is discrete, then for certain interval as we saw the value of the function f x will remain constant. So, we can decide that okay, the inverse when we take the inverse, we will take the smallest value of y. So, that is possible. Okay. So, we can define, uh, we can determine the inverse in a unique way, whether the function random variable x is 
um, discrete or continuous. And so, this will be valid for both of them, but here I am just now talking about uh, x being a, a continuous random variable. Okay. So, therefore, um, this is this and since now again this thing can be written as f x of f x inverse y and therefore, from the definition of uh, f x and f x inverse, this it comes out to be y. So, which is that means, your capital y has a uniform distribution 0 1. Right. So, the idea is that you generate random numbers u 1 u 2 u n random numbers from the uniform. So, of course, you might say ki, uh, how do you do that and there are methods, uh, there are uh, computer methods for generating random numbers, but which are which are actually pseudo random numbers. So, there are a whole lot of techniques and a lot of software available for generating uh, uh, these uh, random numbers from which are actually pseudo random numbers from the uniform 0 1. Once you do that, then you will say that um, uh, the x i is given by f inverse of u i are random numbers from the distribution of uh, the original uh, random variable that you started. Right. So, uh, the process is that you generate random numbers from the uniform 0 1 and then take the uh, x i's which are given by f inverse x u i and these will be the random numbers from the distribution of x. So, now you see you can uh, immediate application of your uniform distribution. So, you can generate any number of um, values from a given for a from a specified uh, p d f to uh, you know do all kinds of analysis that you may want to do about that data. So, I would like to revisit the concept of expectation of a random variable. Uh, now, and for the discrete case we saw that it is defined as summation x i p x i over all x i for which the probability is uh, positive. Right. And if these values x i that the random variable x takes are finite in number, then this sum will the, is a finite number, because you are adding up uh, p x i are all between 0 and 1, these are finite in number, then this will add up to a finite number. So, in that case, whenever the random variable takes a finite number of values, uh, the uh, expectation always exists. Right. But we also saw that uh, in the case of uh, Poisson a random variable, where the values taken by the variable are countably infinite. In that case, uh, the expectation, which is the uh, sum of the series, uh, we could add up and show that it is actually equal to the uh, parameter of the uh, Poisson, and in fact, it is right. So this is also called the mean of the param Poisson distribution. So for this uh, for this uh, case where the values taken by the random variable are infinite, countably infinite, the uh, expectation exists. So therefore, uh, uh, there always has to be when we define the function e x, we will say that this is the expectation provided it exists. So uh, now uh, look at another random variable which takes uh, countably infinite numbers. Uh, for example, take the probability of x equal to n as c of 1 n square. So, x takes the values 1 to infinity. Uh, now, since you want this to be a valid uh, PMF, so the uh, summation n to 1, infin 1 to infinity of probability x equal to, this should be capital X, capital X equal to n is this summation, right. And therefore, this is equal to, and we know this series is a convergent series and it is known that the sum, sum of the series 1 to infinity 1 upon n square is actually pi square by 6. right? And so, your c must be 6 by pi square. So, once I define my c to be 6 by pi square, this is a, a valid PMF, okay? but when you want to compute the expectation, the expectation would be c sigma n into 1 by n square n varying from 1 to infinity, but then this sub series uh, 1 by n summation 1 to infinity, we all know is a uh, divergent series and therefore, expectation does not exist. Right. So, therefore, one has to be cautious and careful and make sure that uh, uh, your, uh, uh, I mean E x is defined only if it exists. Now, similarly, in the case of uh, continuous random variables, the, uh, this integral may not always exist even if your uh, f is a valid uh, p d f uh, the probability density function. Uh, and I will give you an example here, this is known as uh, the, the uh, p d f 
where f x is equal to 1 upon pi into 1 upon x square, uh, x varying from minus infinity to infinity. This is known as the Cauchy's uh, distribution uh, P, uh, P d f and here uh, again uh, this is a valid P d f, because integral minus infinity to infinity 1 upon pi 1 plus x square d x. Uh, so, integral of 1 upon 1 plus x, x square is tan inverse x minus infinity to infinity 1 upon pi, then tan inverse of infinity is pi by 2, tan inverse of minus infinity is minus pi by 2. So, therefore, the, it becomes plus and uh, this is equal to 1. So, this is again a valid uh, probability density function, but uh, when you want to compute the expectation of this random variable, you have to integrate this particular integral and uh, you can show that here. You see, if I make the substitution that x square is equal to. So, actually uh, this is an improper integral and I will just consider the integral from 1 to infinity, let us say. And you, if, if this is not existing, uh, then obviously, uh, 0 to infinity will also not exist and therefore, this whole thing will also not exist. So, um, let us put x square equal to t, then your d x, x d x is d t and so, x d x you replace by, oh, there will be a 2 somewhere, okay, should have uh, taken, because this is this, then your 2 x, 2 x d x is equal to d t. So, this will be um, 1 by 2 here, right, x d x is uh, 1 by 2 d t. So, this and the integral of this is ln of 1 plus t, 1 to infinity and you know that ln of infinity is infinity. So, therefore, um, this uh, integral does not have a finite value. So, your expectation does not exist and, uh, uh, and hence your variance will also not exist. Now, uh, since variance of x would be e x square minus e x whole square and we have just seen that e x does not exist for this particular random variable. So, therefore, variance also will not exist because it has to be e x square minus this. So, if this does not exist, that means this is not finite, then obviously, uh, variance will also not be finite and so we will say that it does not exist. So, I just thought that I uh, will put in this note here before we proceed with the uh, other theory of uh, probability theory. So, that um, you can find, you can you know you cannot always be sure that uh, the expectation of a random variable will exist. Okay. Now, another uh, very important or widely used concept in probability theory is that of a uh, normal random variable and its uh, probability density function. Uh, so, the function is um, defined by uh, 1 upon root 2 pi sigma e, e raised to minus 1 by 2 sigma square x minus mu square, where mu and sigma are the parameters of the normal p d f and x varies from minus infinity to infinity. Now, you can look at uh, this thing here e raise to minus 1 by 2 sigma square x minus mu whole square. So, it can be shown uh, you know uh, you can people have uh, already drawn the graph for different values of x and uh, mu and sigma. So, this is uh, a bell shaped curve okay, and uh, it is symmetric about mu that you can see from here because x minus mu whole square. So, uh, it is symmetric that means, uh, uh, on either side of mu you take the value this uh, sign will not matter and therefore, this is symmetric about uh, the uh, value x equal to mu and this was uh, uh, this distribution was discovered by uh, uh, was uh, defined by let us say French, French mathematician Ab Abraham de Moore in 1733 and can you believe that he was not a very uh, he uh, to make a living he used to uh, spend time in a you know at that time in a dingy uh, gambling house he would be sitting in the evenings uh, spend whole evening there and trying to help people because he he used this concept uh, of the normal distribution to approximate binomial distributions and binomial distributions he was using to help people because it was a gambling house people would come to bet money and of course would want to uh, win uh, their bets and so he would give them the probability of you know winning which bet and so on and so he he actually used this concept for uh, approximating binomial distributions and we will be discussing uh, uh, those approximations little later on so um, this is how but uh, the concept he introduced 
is, is a very, very uh, important and very widely used one. Uh, and I think by the end of the course, you will also see how important this concept is to the probability theory and uh, you know for uh, various estimations that we want to make about uh, different events and their probabilities. Okay. So, um, um, uh, this and now let us see uh, whether this is actually a valid uh, PDF. So, we want to integrate uh, this function from minus infinity to infinity and show that the integral is equal to 1. Uh, so, here uh, what I do is I make the transformation, okay, yeah, I have made the transformation y is equal to x minus mu by sigma. Okay. So, then uh, d y is d x upon sigma. So, d x upon sigma appears here, which gets replaced by d y and 1 upon under root 2 pi is here. Then this is e raise to minus y square by 2. Uh, this remains from minus infinity to infinity, because mu and sigma are finite numbers. So, then um, we have to now integrate this and let me call this integral as i. So, if I multiply this by another integral, this is the notation. So, i square now will become a double integral 1 upon 2 pi minus infinity to infinity minus infinity to infinity e raise to minus y square plus t square by 2 d y d t. See, t and y are dummy variables. So, it does not matter and therefore, I can say that it is this is also i minus infinity to infinity 1 upon 2 pi root 2 pi. Okay, that becomes 2 pi, because you are multiplying them. So, um, e raise to minus t square by 2 d t. So, this is what you have and now uh, we want to uh, be able to compute uh, this integral and there this is where we will use uh, polar coordinates. So, uh, let me show you the computations. Uh, 